Hi guys, uh, Dylan, what the hell are you wearing? What? What the hell? This is like the high I go out at night. Hmm? Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, anyway, guys, we're that. back for more Warlord. Mm -hmm. M18 Hellcat. <sighs> She's beautiful. Beautiful kit, beautiful model, Incredible beautiful vehicle. vehicle. Yes, she, absolutely brilliant. She's gorgeous. This, this is a vehicle that both of us have had personal experience with as well. Like yes, We have uh, been on board these things. So. Yes, while I was doing the World War II reenactments with Master Lions, yep. I spent two years as crew for her. Yeah, you were in the uh, the gunner's seat, I believe. Uh, first year, I was in the cool driver slash radio operator's yeah, seat. Yeah. Uh, second year, I was down in the, the gunner's seat, which was beautiful. In the belly of the beast, yeah. Yeah, with a, a 50 cal firing off above me, dropping hot blank shells down on my back. Yeah, that's... Uh, the first piece of advice John gave me was, right, whenever you're down beneath this, make sure and pull the collar up. That yeah. way you don't get a scalding hot shell down the back. Yes, because those shells are hot. <laughs> yes, and I stole maybe 20 of them after we were done. Absolutely. Right, anyway. The yeah, kit. the kit. The kit. She's right. a Matlin Resin Hybrid kit. Yes, indeed. So, you will have a little bit of play with this, but anyone that's used to working with them, not an issue. The stand, standard with issue with, with resin kits, just take your time, watch yeah. for the dust and all that sort of stuff, basically. Yeah, and um, just have a little patience with your glue. Yeah, absolutely. So. And here's something that's immediately nice about this kit. Uh, we'll... Where is our camera? There is our yeah, camera. Our camera. Tracks already on. The, the tracks are already on. It's a it's a one piece cast hull, which is nice. Yeah, it's, it's something you don't really see a lot of, and the detail they've got out of it is really crisp. Mate. Look at that engine bay. Yeah. It's really nice because you've got all your Pioneer tools, your vents and grills in around it, and all your yep. your petrol caps and stuff. Yeah. Did I get it all right? Yeah, yeah, more or less. <laughs> uh, so in the front we have, I believe, driver's seat. Driver on the left. And co driver, co -driver on, on the right. Right, which yep. is where I was sitting. Yeah. Which is. It was quite entertaining that year, just to be sat while the battle was raging around me, just looking around going, Yeah, you can just relax, you can just sit back, you're not doing anything. Yeah, you know? I think you actually cut your hand that year on a, on something. I probably did. Or was I... it you burnt, no, it was you burnt yourself on the barrel of your gun that year. Yes, that's right. Because you weren't thinking and grabbed it after firing it. <sighs> we all live and learn. Yes, we do. But no, detail in around the tracks, really, really nice. Really yep. clean kit. Yep. Really, really clean cast. Mm -hmm. We then come to... The turret. The turret. So, oh, very See, he's right. going to put this in now, and then we're going to have to go and build it for part two of the video, and you're just going to, it's no, going to be fine. a nightmare to take so, off again. There's the turret in. Mm -hmm. So you've got two crew inside. Now, I think yep. this is a little bit of a bugbear for you because it's meant to be a three man crew. In the it's turret. a three man turret. It's a three man turret. Where's the commander? Okay. There's no commander. I see a loader and I see a gunner. I don't see a commander. Yeah, so up here would be your gunner. Uh, and yep. here's your loader. You have your gunner down here sat in the front, you have your loader sat here. He's got a ready rack of ammunition in front of him and uh, into the back of the turret as well. He's got a secondary rack and then down into the hull yep. where the rest of the, the yep. rounds are stored. And Again, brilliant detail on this because you've got all the, the little stowage bins and stuff up yep. around it all filled up with and packs and stuff. Yeah, I like the fact that there's already stowage on it. You don't have to go and find uh, some or uh, buy some or anything like that. There's yeah. always stuff there. Yeah, but no, they've done an, an amazing job with it. Yeah. All right, let's get on to the business end of it, the guns. Yeah, so we have so, two. We have two. Why do mm -hmm. we have two? We have two because <clears throat> there was two... Uh, basically, Hellcat was a late war vehicle. Okay. Um, it's armed with a 76mm gun, which is the same as the likes of the Sherman Easy 8 mm -hmm. um, but also the, <clears throat> the M4A176. Right. It's more or less the same gun, and the M4A... Uh, blah, 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 the M4A176 had a... No muzzle break on it. Right. Uh, probably because the turret was bigger and it just uh, allowed the recoil to go as far back as it needed. Yeah. The reason for having a muzzle break is that it reduces the re the length of recoil that the gun takes when it fires. Oh, right. So it's giving an extra final venting point. Yeah. It vents, okay. it, it vents some of the gases sideways and back, I think. So it sort of acts as a bit of a buffer right. to stop the gun running back just as far as it would right, without. Right, so she's not going to tear herself out of her yeah. mitten. So in it, you would have found the, the initial production Hellcats that seen service uh, towards the end of 44, early 45, mm -hmm. wouldn't have had the muzzle brake on them. But most of the Hellcats you'll find now, which are the more sort of very late stage war um, and then post-war period, mm -hmm. is when they fitted the muzzle brakes to them. Right. Uh, and a lot of them went off to serve in the likes of the Jordanian army and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff until the 60s. Yeah. With that sort of setup. Yeah. Well, I mean, like in bolt action, this this is a fantastic vehicle. Yeah. Have. When we were looking through the rules, we were quite surprised, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you're not breaking two hundred points. No. 
Well, the only way you're breaking 200 points is uh, if you go veteran, that's 186 points. Yep. Add yourself a heavy machine gun, that's 25, yep. and add Raki to it. Yep. And I will say this now, anybody who takes this without those two upgrades, you are a lunatic. Just Absolutely. because they're so useful. Because you, you, you get an, an HMG up there, Yep. which will do whatever it does. It's a 50 support. cal. Happy yep. you like. Uh, you get Raki, which we looked at, and we are just like, well, why wouldn't you make this Raki at all? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you want to explain Raki to them? Okay, I'll quickly run through what Raki is. Basically, it gives you an option for a, an escape move. Mm -hmm. Say... Say I was shooting at this or assaulting this. Whoever's commanding this has the option to go for an escape move, which means you can make a normal move, back the way and maneuver. Mm -hmm. So basically, I say, right, John, I'm going to shoot at that. No, you're not. I'm you're making not. my I escape move. I get to move, move. away. Yep. So basically, you can put this into position, get it firing, and then whenever it's starting to take that backwards fire, it's got a way out. It's yep. got a way to save itself and stay in the fight for longer. It also means that when he's moved, if you're going to continue to shoot at him, you're now shooting at a moving target, which I believe is minus one to hit. I believe so. No, I think it's when you move that right. it, you get that minus one. But, you but know. It, it means that I could nip this in around behind a building yeah. and just have it nipping out, shooting every turn, just back and forth. But then you would be suffering the moving while I, shooting. I don't really mind having that extra penalty to it mm -hmm. because I'm going to make it so that this is just a pure annoyance to you on the table. Yeah. You know, you are not going to be fit to ignore this. You are going to have to get up close and personal to get rid of this. Yep. And even whenever you're getting up close and personal, if you even think about assaulting it, it's still <laughs> going to move me, come away. Get me, come and get me. It's going to move away and it's going to bring its machine guns to bear on you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because you can do this move whether you've activated it or not in a turn. Yeah. So I can activate this, have it move out, shoot. And when it takes the incoming fire, it bugs out again. It can bug out again. Yep. It's, it's ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. Some of the other components we have, we have couple of little heads for yep, our, our two-man crew. For the two-man crew, which is from a three-man turret. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a, we've got our HMG, yep. which is the fifty, the, the, the classic fifty caliber, that yep. classic American machine gun that we all know and mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. uh, we then have a couple of crew hatches. The crew the hatches for the front. Yep. We then have spare track and the MG ring. Yep. Uh, then we have lots of little toy eyes. Towing eyes and most likely light light hoops as well, light guard yep. hoops. Yep. And that's everything that's in this kit. Now there's one component that I'm not sure of, which is this little bit here. I have a feeling they might be support struts for the, the gun ring, maybe. I don't Possibly. know. Probably Possibly. not actually, because it's not suspended. It's not above the turret. Yeah, it, you had said it was maybe something to go on. Maybe for something the gun. for the gun recoil, you know, I'm, for a I'm gun sure shield. We'll figure it out once we build this, which yeah. I think John, we've we've winded enough about this just for, for right now. For right now. Let's go away, build it up, and we'll come back in part two. And we're back. Right? We are back. Now right. you get to wax lyrical. Oh. At God. last. At last. I can talk historical stuff and everyone else has went, don't need to watch part two. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, or a scanny sitting there with the notepad going, right, what am I correcting? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, and we'll, be, we'll bring out the little black book of John's mistakes. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll start yeah. writing that down. You do realise he'll come across sometime and just slam down this ancient tome of front. <laughs> get it right! This, these are the mistakes you, you did. This is what you could have won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, the Hellcat's built. She's beautiful. It is. Let's, well, let's have a look at it, to be honest with you, because it was a good build. It was a fast build, obviously, because the, the tracks and the hull were in one piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, no stowage or anything to put on. No stowage or anything to put on. Only had two crew heads to, to stick in there, uh, the gun ring and a couple of hatches and that. Yeah. The, uh, the only thing that took a bit of time was the, um, the light hoops. Uh -huh. uh, the guard hoops, yeah. which if I'd spent a bit more time on it, I should have bent into shape properly and you know made sure they were all sat at the level height and everything. But mm -hmm. you know, it's a war gaming mini. As soon as you're what three, four feet away. Well, from here it looks like a Hellcat to me. I think that's the yeah. important bit. Of yeah, it. that that's the important bit of any of these kits. Yeah, I, mean, no. like, I see you've actually took a little time to actually straighten out the gun barrel. That was, took a was, while. 
Yeah, with, with metal minis, you always do get that. Sometimes a little bit of a curve in the, the gun barrel. Yeah. You'll try to bend it and straighten it, and then you bent it in the wrong place, and then yep. it's just tink, 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 tink. And the mold lines, you notice I got rid of the mold lines? Yep, you got rid of all the mold lines. Yep. And now, here's the test. Mm -hmm. This turret, in part one, this was tight as hell. Is it's, it still... It's, it's a little just don't, please don't point it towards the front of the vehicle, because okay. I have sanded it for quite a while. Okay, so... It's still pretty tight. So, so front ways... It tightens up a little bit, but yeah, you you need again, to. It's it's just working at the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I was I was pretty pleased with the gun barrel. I was kind of glad I got it yeah. the way it is. So yeah, but I mean, like once you have it built and see the turret with the gun and all sitting on, you get the real sense of the presence this vehicle would have had. Yeah. Well, has because some people still own it. Yeah, I mean, we, you and I, like we said in part one, we've both sat in one of these things. Yeah, we've we've both sat in one of these. Although I do remember the year I was in the the gunner's position. Uh, we had a little bit of a snafu, it was raining that day, mm. and we had uh, three pyros strapped to the, the barrel of the it. The barrel, yeah. Which all went off at the same time. And deafened the driver. Deafened the driver. Who had and, earplugs in. Yep. <laughs> and I think everybody on the field was blinded as well. Yeah, there was a few people that looked back and sort of blinked a few times yeah. at us, and we sort of went, all right. Yeah, you know, I was sitting down in behind the gun shield, all I felt was, boom, the hell did this thing fire? <laughs> So yeah, what 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 should we talk about with the Hellcat then? Uh, right, when did she come into service? Came into service in mid to late forty four. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the American doctrine at the time was if we want something that's fast and mobile, it has to be able to kill tanks. Mm -hmm. Or you know, if we want the tank killer, it's got to have these attributes to it. Yeah. Um, so the I believe this was built by Buick, the car company Buick. Okay. Um, and their specification was for a vehicle that could do at least 45 miles an hour. Oh, weighed, oh, okay. weighed, open country, road, both. rough field? Anything, any train, it had to do at least 40 to 45 miles an hour. Okay, that's a big ask for a heavy piece of vehicle. Yeah, and the weight specification was about 20 tonnes. They had to keep it to 20 tonnes, and then it had to have the 76 millimeter gun. Yeah. Those were the requirements. Yeah. Anything else was up to Buick. Right. Uh, so armor thickness was up to Buick, and armor thickness is nearly non-existent on Hellcat. It's about a quarter inch to half inch. So light armed. Yeah, it'll stop machine gun rounds, but it wouldn't stop an anti-tank gun of nearly any caliber. Yeah, but in the field, this thing would be so fast, you know, they're not going to catch it. But that's that, there's where the problem with Hellcat comes in. The popular history of Hellcat is that it was so fast and was able to outrun stuff. Mm. They never really used it in that role. They never used it its speed mm. to um, flank enemy positions or flank enemy vehicles right. and take them out from the sides. Mm. A lot of historical documentaries will say this is what Hellcat was supposed to do. No, Hellcat didn't do that. Okay. Um, what Hellcat ended up being done was the doctrine at the time was for the anti-tank sections of your armoured division, which were your Hellcats, your Jacksons, yep. your M36s and all that, yep. they were to sit back and wait for the commander at the front to say, we need anti-tank here right away. So they were firefighting? Yeah. So these, these guys were, would be called in to use their speed to get mm -hmm. to the front line, not yeah. to outmaneuver anything. Yeah. Um, Hellcat's biggest success as an anti-tank weapon and using its maneuverability mm -hmm. uh, came during the, towards the latter stages of the Battle of the Bulge, right. where a platoon of these was stuck in a village. Yep. The fog was down. I think these, the, the records maybe said that the visibility was maybe 200 meters. Okay. Or 300 meters, something like so that. So right and tight. Yeah, you're with anything with that kind of gun, you're firing point blank at 300 meters. Yeah. So um, what happened was that these guys were brought into this village. They had to hold the village as long as they could, and a regiment of panthers turned up. Fun. Yep, so these panthers started to advance on them. Mm. And using their maneuverability, what they would do is fire and maneuver. Yeah. The, the guys broke themselves down into a couple of sections. Yeah. One section would move up, fire, reposition, fire from another angle, reposition, fire from another angle. Mm -hmm. They did this for about six or seven hours. Yep. And uh, the Germans, the entire Panzer Regiment fell back because they believed they had run into the core elements of an army. I see. So because they were fit to reposition so quickly, the Germans saw so many fire points. Yep. You know, there's fire coming from there, 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 there. Crap, there has to be a lot of stuff there. Let's bug out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, that's quite clever. It, it was a very clever thought. And it, I think in some cases, I don't know if this bit's myth or not, mm. but apparently the Hellcat crews painted over the tank numbers on their vehicles. So that if the Germans caught eye on them, they couldn't say, I seen that vehicle over there five minutes ago. Yeah, so suddenly one became two, 
yeah. two became three, whatever. They made the vehicles anonymous so they, they all looked the same regardless of where oh, they were. Oh, I see what, right. That, that sounds like it could be myth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something that was maybe came up by someone afterwards, just said, oh, wouldn't that be cool? And someone then took it as yeah. it could be true. Someone took it as it was true. It might have been something they did after the engagement where they thought, that's a good idea because they might recognize the vehicles in different positions. Yeah, or uh, maybe uh, at the end of it they said, right, if they come back, let's not show our numbers to them. Yeah. A lot of times as well with tank crews, they in the late war, they painted over the white star. Mm. They painted it over in either dark gray or black. Right. Just so that when you're up close to it, it's there, mm. but at a distance, it's not an aiming point for someone. Yes, because you've pointed this out to me on, say, Sherman or something, where yep. they would have the, the extra plate welded on the side but have the star on it. And, and the star German on German gunners would actually just use that as an aiming point to actually yeah. go, that's where his ammo is, skadoosh. The best picture of that is in Battle of the Bulge, mm. during the Ardennes offensive with a Sherman that had been knocked out, mm. and there was two holes from a 75mm anti-tank gun through the middle of the star. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that, that was the aiming point. You point your gun at that and you'll hit it. So. Yeah. Right, well, I think that's all we really have to say about the Hellcat. She's a beautiful vehicle, brilliant in-game, mm -hmm. and seems to have a really great history. Guys, myself and John are going to move on here. We'll see what else we can find to unbox, and we'll see you in the next video.